work. Uh, we get hit pretty hard. The snow. Switching around here. There's the other end. Where it came in at. Yeah. Like my videos. Subscribe. And hit the notification bell button. I know I don't say that enough, but. For a few, a few videos, I said it almost all the time, then I kind of stopped. And I got like 80,000 pounds of chicken feed. Gotta feed them Chick fil A chickens. Yep, all these chickens are going to go to Chick fil A. Those are 43,000 pound beds. I got 80,000 pounds of feed. So I've got that one filled up already. Now I'm working on that one. Switch this thing around here. These are pockets. About 8,000 pounds in the pocket. And this is a back unload, so I start. Doing it from the back and work my way forward. You see, I'm on pocket three now, and it's empty because I can, I can hear it. The auger makes a different noise when it's empty. Listen to the auger. Empty, empty, empty. I'll pick it up in a minute. There, you hear it? It's gotten quieter. Yeah, this is my rig. Yeah, I travel all over Ohio. Delivering chicken feed. Chick-fil-A is our biggest customer. McDonald's buys from us too, but not that much. Wendy's buys from us. We used to, we used to grow out two different sized birds. A small bird, the chicken up to about four, three to four pounds. And a large bird, seven to eight pounds. What Chick fil A says, you know, they come in and they want us to do nothing but small birds. We're kind of pissed off our other customers. But Chick fil A gave us a, a lot of money to do this, so, um, so we went ahead and changed only over to small birds. of them was 406 I mean the live weight was 460 and the live weight for the smallest was 440 the uh, hanging weight the uh, biggest one was 450 no 460 and then the next one was 450 smallest was 410. So, I mean, and, and I did not get very much fat from them because these pigs, they got out a lot. Then they ran and we had to chase them down and herd them back into the pen, what my brother-in-law did. 
Uh, they got out so much that they ran most of the fat off. Uh, processor I used, I'm not using no more. Uh, his Italian sausage, bland. Just tastes like ground pork. Uh, and there's a uh, sage sausage, ground pork. So I'm just going to use that to make meatballs. Get some beef. And uh, I go to one of these farms to buy me a, buy me a half a half a beer. Get some uh, get some beef, get some pork, make Italian uh, meatballs. Go to some spaghetti. My chicken had a downside. I've weighed too many chickens for where I live. I live I live in Kent. Um, they say I could have 19 birds. Well, I had 19, but uh, I didn't. You know, they wasn't very happy with the space they had. So I downsized. I got 14 now. I got. Uh, Four of them laying eggs. And I got uh, four, four, four ducks. Um, we start beehive this spring. I've already got, I've already got everything bought. And I, I got to go pick everything up in April 1st. The first week of April. Uh, But the bees I'm getting is going to be a hybrid between the Italian and the Corolla. Corolla, start to see. Um, very gentle bees. Um, yeah, I'm out there in the middle of the in the middle of the hives last October uh, when I decided to do this. Flying around, I looked at looked at the hives, touched the hives. Bees didn't pay me no mind, so they're very gentle bees, and that's why I chose that 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 kind of bees. Because I'm gonna work them with that, uh, with working with that a hood. I'm gonna get a hood just in case I get a swarm coming in. And I don't really know the swarm, where it came from, how they are. Uh, my wife and my two sons said that they're, they'll help help me if I get them the full suit. So I gotta buy them the whole the whole suit the whole suit. Uh, and here's how I close the lid. Got this bed full, and I got the other one almost full. One's got 40, 44,000 pounds in it, and one's got 38,000. Right? Okay. Got 44,000 and 38,000. This place is filled up. Hold on, I gotta put you down. Oh. Yeah, had to get up in the truck. Give a paper now. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm sideways. Let me see if I can fix it. There. I gotta run this paper here out. Put the mailbox. Hold on, there.
a pretty sweet deal that we offer these farmers. We will finance them a barn. They picked the size of barns. We got, uh, we got a couple of different sizes. We got a small barn. Oh, it's this, this right here has got two small barns. Uh, it's about two football fields long and 40 foot wide. The long ones, it's four football fields long and 80 to 120 foot wide. Those are long ones, or big ones. Uh, we finance them. Uh, we supply the chickens. We supply the feed at no cost. Um, they supply the water, the heat, and they need any chemicals for the water treatments. They have to deal that. They have to clean clean the, the system up. But we come in once every six months to take out the uh, sawdust. It was that was coming out every time we change, but Chick Fil A says nope. They want a disease-resistant chicken, so leave leave the sawdust in for a minimum six months. Chicken dies. They die. Only the strong chicken survives. Disease-resistant. No antibiotics. No, no antibiotics. We don't give none of that to the chickens. Um, we was giving them antibiotics before Chick-fil-A came along. But now, they don't get nothing but feed. The feed is, I don't know where they get the feed from, I'll tell you the series. I don't know if it's non-GMO or if it's GMO. I don't know. Um, I know it's 90% corn, crushed corn. Uh, I think it's uh, five percent soybeans and five percent uh, whole wheat. Everything's all processed together, mixed up, and they do a uh, they do a very fine cook on it. Um, they wet it all down. They waters 140 degrees. Um, and then uh, they do that because they have to make it into pellets. Um, and then it goes through a, a 210 degree dryer. Everything is somewhat cooked. Um, I'm backing out a little crooked here. I got to straighten back out. I can't see the driveway, guys. I mean, it's got so much snow out here. I'm just trying to follow my tracks in. That's kind of hard to do. See, everything is all white. <coughs> there we go back on track now uh, yeah but to get back to it uh, and how that how they get paid is they used to get paid by the weight how much weight the, the barn uh, produces now they get pay, paid per chicken and a small barn, for every harvest, harvest is uh, 43 days. And then, it, then, it, then the barn sits for a week, and then they bring in new chicks. 
But uh, one of these small barns. Are you sure what? How big it is? Here's the end. There's the silo. That's about a little, right around halfway. Maybe, maybe just a little bit over halfway down. This is, like I say, this is a small barn. But, uh, talked to one farmer. He's got a, a, a medium sized barn. He says it makes about a half a million in his pocket every harvest. It's a lot of money, guys. But uh, then if you have to pay, if you have to pay off your barn, you know, so much of, so much of your profit goes to your barn payment. And they got it fixed up to barn and be paid off in two years. And to put on that uh, one of the large barns, uh, it's got scales and everything, it's three million dollars. And the small barns, one million. But the large barns are gonna produce more money and more money in your pocket. A lot more work, because you gotta go every day to see if you got any dead chickens. You gotta get them out of there so ASAP. You don't want any dead chickens laying around. Yeah, this snow, I don't mind the dry powdery snow, but this is wet, slippery, it's bad. Very bad. Coming in here, I almost ran into the ditch. What I was doing is try, I was trying to make my turn in here, and all the truck wanted to do is go straight to the wanted to go straight to the ditch. It took me a little bit, but I finally got it in. The thing is, just don't get in a rush, guys. Don't get in a rush at all. I'm not a Redskin fan, guys. It's just, uh, I was over in that area running steel, and the mill says, uh, hey, you have to have a long sleeve shirt, so I went down to the local Walmart. And all they had was their local team. So I got the Washington Redskin shirt. Um, they're not called Redskins anymore. I forget what they changed the name to. Um, but I wear this in the winter time. It's it's no thicker than a t-shirt. It's just a long sleeve t-shirt. That's all it is. You can turn the seat down. I'm trying to chase myself out of this truck. It's 27 degrees here in Ohio, Northeast Ohio. Um, around the Wooster, Cant, Akron area. Um, say I run all the way down next to Columbus, down next to West Virginia, over next to Pennsylvania. Um, somebody's calling me, I don't recognize that number. But they'll leave a message. I don't I don't talk on the phone anyway when I'm uh, when I'm driving. <clears throat> Here I can pop the phone up and just talk to you guys. Uh, say this is a pretty boring job, but. It's one of the easiest jobs I've had. The hardest job was steel hauling. I'm going to haul steel. 
Um, never home. Physically, physically um, challenging. Um, this. I basically just sit, sit and drive, crank the things, open, crank the doors open and close. I gotta go home and work out every day just to burn some of my uh, sugar and stuff that I, I intake. Keep my sugar levels low. Yeah, my hair is sticking straight up everywhere. That's why I hate, I hate wearing a damn toboggan. But gotta keep my ears warm. When I was younger, I got a small case of frostbite on the tips of my fingers, the tips of my ears. If they get a little bit cold, they sting and hurt. There's a road I want. It looks like it stopped snowing now. Oh, it's supposed to snow all night tonight, off and on. We're supposed to get two to three foot of snow. And we're pretty close to a foot now. Not exactly a foot, but close to it. came in here, this road had nothing but snow on it. Let me put you see. Now it's pretty clear. I mean, they hit, they hit it with salt and cinders. And over here in uh, Wayne County, Ohio, they'll come in with salt first, lay salt down. They come in here with cinder and sand. They mix it, they got it on the back of a heated truck to keep it all heated up, and then they throw it down. And it works with the, uh, the salt, because once, uh, once, the, once the weather gets down in the 20s, the salt doesn't like to work too good. So on these county roads, they throw a little bit of salt, they throw salt down, sand and cinder, on the highway, they have that brine they, they throw down. Uh, I don't know why they don't do brine over here. Uh, they should, but they don't. Yeah, just taking it easy. The company was going to call, call a second shift off. I'm a second shift guy. I'm supposed to work 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. I came in today at 12.30, starting a little early. First shift, they ran three, three, three loads and they're out. And they were going to call us off. They told me that I might only get two. And I'm going to try to get three in and out. Do what I can do. The road gets too bad. I'm out of here. I'm out. I'll park the truck and go home. Say I'm 59 years old. I've got grandkids I got I gotta stay safe for, you know. Uh, yeah, my, I live for my grandkids. Um, that's the way most grandparents are. Yeah, uh. I don't have much to say. I mean, I'm looking for a property. I got, I'm, 
you know, I don't live square in the middle of town. I live, you know, out to the edges. But I still live in camp. Um, I want to move out in the country. Um, I want to buy my own land. I want to buy a, between two to 50 acres. Um, if I can get, if I can get more than that, that's fine. Um, I'm looking at this one. It's got a log cabin on it. Log cabin was built in 1850. Uh, of course, you know, it has no electric, no running water. It's got a well uh, on the property. Um, it's got an outhouse. Uh, my wife says that if I get that, I'm going to have to if she wants, if she, if she wants me to, uh, her to live in that log cabin, that I have to put at least solar panels on it, uh, put a pump into the well so I can pump the water so she has running water, and I have to put in a septic system because she don't want to have to go to the outhouse all the time. Uh, she. She doesn't mind being off the grid as long as she's got electricity. She don't care how I get the electricity. She wants electricity. Um, she wants running water. We don't have to be hooked to a city. Um, she wants running water. She, and I don't blame her. I mean, I could live without all that, but if I, I've been married. I got married in '86, so that's 34, 35 years. '86, '96, 2006, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 34 years. Yep, 34 years of August 30th. Um, so, uh, she's, if I want to stay married, I got to uh, bend a little bit. She's going to bend, you know, so I got to bend. I mean, I don't mind. I've been looking at uh, ways to heat the water um, using wood, a wood stove, uh, or coal, or electric. I mean, if I got solar, if I got solar panels, I can use electric. I might even uh, look into getting them one, get one of them uh, portable wind turbines. So when it's not so sunny out, at least it's windy. And I can always make electricity through the wind. One thing about Ohio, we got wind and we got sun. Even in the mid, middle of uh, winter time, like this is now, we still, we still produce the electricity from the sun. Uh, you know, it's cloudy. It's not that cloudy. It's, it's cloudy. But uh, it won't produce that much electricity. That's why you get the wind turbine to back up the system. And so, yeah, I'm hoping I can get that one property. And it, it comes out of 36 acres. Um, you know, I told my wife, I said, you know, I can, uh, you know, she says she'll live in that log cabin without the stuff done to it for no more than six months. Uh, she won't do it in the wintertime. So, if I, if I get it, and 
And before we move out there, I'm just going to go ahead and get the water, get the water run. Uh, get the uh, plumbing all done. Put in a septic tank. Um, I'm going to get to put in a septic tank that uh, after it separates the water and the, and the solids. I can pump the solids out into an area and I gotta get me a, a skid steer and then you know and I can put tarp, tarp over it and everything and uh, make a uh, big soil basically make some rich soil I can throw some leaves on it and uh, clippings you know Wood, wood shavings. All this will break everything down. It takes about 12 months before you can use it. But my wife says, I, you're not going to use that on my garden. <laughs> she don't mind me putting a uh, cow manure in the garden. Or horse manure. Or pig manure. Uh, not, no to human waste. So. I mean, I could use it in the flower garden. She says that's okay there. Uh, I could sell it. Put it in uh, 50 pound bags and sell it as compost. And let it sit for, that's, uh, it'd be compost in a year. By, by, uh, I think it takes almost two years to come to turn it into complete soil. I mean, I can hold it for two years and then bag it up as soil, rich soil, potting soil. But me and her, we're not. We won't produce that much waste. I mean. That cabin comes with a, um, an added on kitchen to the side. It was added on around 1900. Uh, the cabin's in pretty good shape. I mean, it's going to need a new tin roof. Um, you don't see no daylight through any of the, the caulking. Wood's in good shape. Uh, I'm thinking about painting the wood green. 